The Chicago Bulls get possibly their best win of the season against the Denver Nuggets, in which saw Zach Levine continue to look like the elite offensive player he can be on top of Patrick Williams having one of his best games off the bench for the Chicago Bulls. We're going to talk about what all went into that win, plus the optimism around the team as they head towards the play-in, hopefully. And we're also going to ask, is P. Will finally starting to turn the corner? We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central. I'm the host here, Hayes. You can follow me right off the top at CEO Hayes at CEO H-A-I-Z-E. And let's get into the content for today. So the Chicago Bulls, as many uh, Bulls fans I'm sure know by now, the Bulls got a win over the Denver Nuggets, a 21-point win on top of that, just playing and looking like the team that we've wanted to see all season long. Giving the effort defensively for one that maintained throughout four quarters, the Bulls shooting the ball efficiently and effectively, and just... You know, Nikola Vucevic attacking this team, DeMar DeRozan being a facilitator at times, it just helps this team so much. But the story of the game is going to be Zach Levine and another efficient night for Zach Levine. 29 points, five rebounds, four assists. And the key thing in this, he was nine of nine in the paint in this game, helping just completely turn the tide for the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls, as a team, shoot 70% in the paint in this game, as well as score 66 points in the paint. This is how the Chicago Bulls need to play. It has regained some optimism. We know that this team has a tall test ahead of them if they want to find any type of hope to beat to make the playing tournament in this season. But uh, listen, the way that Zach Levine played in this game, 12 of 18 from the field, this is how we need to see Zach Levine play. It just is what it is. When Zach Levine plays like this, it, it completely changes the Chicago Bulls offense that still is not necessarily the most modern offense. It still has its issues with three-point shooting, but it was more than just offense tonight from Zach Levine as well. One of his most engaged defensive games. He also had two steals in this game, just playing heads up, not being caught off the ball or getting blown up or anything like that. Zach Levine played a solid and complete game, and that is why you're going to see Zach Levine be the story of the game. But one of the things that should absolutely be talked about right up there with anything else is the way that Nikola Vucevic came at the two-time and maybe soon to be three-time MVP. And he was like that from the start onset of the game. 25 points, 15 rebounds, three assists uh, did Nikola Vucevic score in this game. He was 9-17 of from the field. But even that box score does not do uh, Nikola Vucevic justice. You had to see this game and see the way that he, from the, from the set, from the start of the game, attacked Nikola, I mean, it's an attack, attack Nikola Jokic. He showed no fear against Jokic, forcing Jokic to try to defend him. Uh, Nikola Vucevic putting the ball on the floor, attacking the paint, uh, just moving, uh, being one of the most limber games we've seen from Nikola Vucevic in a while. Vucevic has been the most consistent Chicago Bull on this team, took it to a two-time MVP, and showed exactly why he was looked at as the center that he was when we got him. And I know a lot of Bulls fans blame things on Nikola Vucevic, and they focus on just what he does not do. But I do think that we miss at times the, the amazing player that Nikola Vucevic is and can be when used correctly in an offense that, that kind of suits him. And Nikola Vucevic is going to have his suitors this, uh, this upcoming offseason, rightfully so. And I, I said on yesterday's live stream, I have, listen, if Nikola Vucevic does end up leaving the Chicago Bulls, the Bulls have no one to blame but themselves and Billy Donovan and the fan base for constantly turning on Nikola Vucevic and not realizing that there aren't many centers that can replace what Nikola Vucevic brings. Yes, you can bring in better defensive centers, and but that's not going to make the team overall better when you when you when he can be the motor on the offensive side of the ball. We'll see what this team ends up doing in that area, but it was just good to see this game from Nikola Vucevic and post game Vuce even uh, talking about what Zach Levine did in this game, saying this. A guy like Zach who can be so efficient and score in so many ways, it's hard to defend that, especially with all the weapons we have around him. When he's decisive and makes the right plays, it's quick. It opens up so much for us. And that is the perfect way to talk about what Zach Levine, when he's playing like the Zach that we know he can be, what he brings to this team, how he makes things different for the Chicago Bulls team. It's, it was a great night from Nikola Vucevic. It was an even better night for, for Zach Levine. And these two players deserve to be talked about in the way that they just executed in this game. Now, outside of that, 
this was a game as well that you had to see to see the defense. It's that sometimes Kobe White played the plays that he changed, the extra possessions he got the Chicago Bulls. Kobe White's game doesn't really show in the stat sheet. He was three for ten from the field. It was tough. Four rebounds, four assists from him, only seven points. But but Kobe White continues to just show and flash the, how much he's developed as an overall basketball player in this offseason. And we'll see what that means for his postseason as well as offseason, I should say, as well and what if the Bulls end up keeping him around. But Kobe White continues to just flash every bit of that of that improved game. The shooting, we definitely want and need to see that be a little bit, not a little bit, we need to see that be better for um for Kobe White, but it kind of is what it is there in that sense. And uh so you know those are the things uh Patrick Beverly as well, just all over the court tonight, getting the Bulls extra possessions, getting the ball to the right player, not necessarily hitting. He was one for four as well uh from the field. He didn't really score the best, but he did all the things in the dirty work that we needed him to do, him and Alice Caruso. Alice Caruso did go on a stretch where it was like he just kept taking the ball to the hole after shooting badly in the first half. He found a way to get his points, albeit only six points, but he was another player that definitely impacted and affected the game that doesn't necessarily show in the box score. But one of the biggest stories that we're going to talk about from tonight as well needs to be DeMar DeRozan and what he talk, what he is as a facilitator. There were periods in this game where DeMar was on the court and Zach Levine was on the bench, and DeMar did look for a shot, and he got a shot in a couple of times. He got 17 points in this game on 6 of 16 shooting, but the eight assists are key here, right? And the three steals. DeMar DeRozan was more of a facilitator. And when DeMar plays like this, it puts the other pl the other players in a better position. And it helps him kind of, you know, because you still have to respect DeMar DeRozan in the mid-range regardless. But it just made him kind of the focal point in a different way, right? He was facilitating. He was doing more of those things. Playing solid. Uh, no, he did, his off-the-ball defense was still terrible. He did play the passing lanes a little bit better and had his head up a little bit better at those times. But this is how good DeMar DeRozan can also be for the Chicago Bulls team when he plays a role like this. But, you know, even with DeMar's facilitating, one of the reasons DeMar was able to facilitate a little bit more in this game, especially when Zach Levine was out, was the play of Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams in this game, uh, having the highest plus minus of any Chicago Bulls player at plus 23. He scores 18 points on nine shots, one of two from the three-point line. He also chips in four rebounds, one steal. But you had to see... Patrick Williams' aggressiveness in this game, the amount of dunks that he had in this game, the times that he followed up his shots in this game, the getting the rebounds, getting the putbacks, tipping balls, like he was all, tipping balls, was that a pause? But uh, he was all over the court and playing well and being a solid two-way player in this game. And that leads to the question, uh, is P. Will slowly starting to turn a corner? Has this move to the bench helped him find his aggressiveness? Has it helped him find kind of his voice and the way that he needs to play and impact the game? Since the All-Star break, P. Will is averaging 10.7 points per game, 2.8 rebounds per game, on 57.5% shooting overall from the field, and 66% from, from the three-point line. That is highly efficient offense from, from Patrick Williams, and this is how we need to see Patrick Williams play, in my opinion. And if anything has come out of the move to the bench, it is, it is him kind of finding his rhythm a little bit better, but understanding how to find his spots, understanding how his energy uh, can help change and dictate games. When you have a Patrick Williams that plays aggressive, it completely makes so many things easier for the Chicago Bulls as a whole. And, I'm, and I, for one, am glad to see Patrick Williams playing in this way. You know, the 21-year-old forward uh, has just been, this is his first season averaging double-digit points per game overall, right? He's averaging 10.3 uh, points per game on the season on 47% shooting. But it's just a different type of way he's getting his shots, and you're seeing him not hesitate. There are so many times in this game where he got the ball and he took players off the dribble to then get an open mid-range shot, and Patrick Williams creating separation with his dribble is, some, is a thing of beauty when you see it in-game. And so on top of that, the putbacks, the dunks, the aggressive dunks, Patrick Williams is really starting to put some things together for the Chicago Bulls. Now, we need to see it sustained. We need to see this aggressiveness um, continue to be rewarded. In this game, for example, for, for the most part, Alex Caruso played the Keith Bogan starting role. Uh, he played 18 minutes of Alex Caruso in this game, and Patrick Williams, even though coming off the bench, led the bench with 30 minutes in this game and being in key stretches down the, stre down the game for the Chicago Bulls. When Patrick Williams plays like this, and Billy Donovan rewards him with more minutes. There's been so many times this season we've seen Patrick Williams be cooking. He's been rocking and rolling. He's been playing well. And then for some reason, Billy Donovan will pull him or not play him in the fourth quarter. We did not see that in this game. 
Billy Donovan rewarded Patrick Williams with giving him more minutes. That 30 minutes off the bench is one of his highest minute outputs they see that he's had since the All-Star break, and he played extremely well and earned that. The Chicago Bulls, at least last night, were a better team when Patrick Williams was on the floor. So this is as that question, like, is P. Will starting to turn that corner? Like, the thing that I want to see from Patrick Williams, whether it's starting, whether it's coming off the bench, is continue to play aggressive. Continue to play with his head up. Continue to understand, go after rebounds, play aggressive, be, be tough. Don't, don't um, give up the ball so much. Dribble. Attack other opposing teams. One of the, the best skill sets that Patrick Williams has as a forward in this league, whether he's the three, whether he's the four, is his ability to put the ball on the floor. His, he doesn't have the best lateral quickness, but he is quick for a player of his size, and I do think that he can take use that to take advantage of other players that don't necessarily expect him to play and move in that way. Um, so, you know, this was one of the games that you saw from the Chicago Bulls. Almost every single thing you needed and wanted to see from the Bulls, they did on this game. 26 assists on 46 made baskets, really good. The turnover to assist ratio was great. They only had eight turnovers, um, 50 rebounds for them. They actually out-rebounded the Denver Nuggets by six. That was one of the keys to the game as well in this one. Nine steals did the Chicago Bulls have in this one. The Bills also had nine uh, offensive rebounds. We've been tough. It's been tough for us to get offensive rebounds here on this most recent stretch, and we're seeing the Chicago Bulls do those things. When the Bulls play like this, they can play with anybody, and we know that. We've seen that over the course of the season. The biggest concern is that they have not continued it. They have not kept it going. They have not kept up that momentum. They have not kept up um, that level of energy and focus and heart and things like that, and that has led to this last topic for today is how much optimism should we have left for the Chicago Bulls team as they head towards the end and conclusion of the 2022-23 season. Right now, the Bulls are one spot behind the Washington Wizards for the 10th and final spot in that play-in tournament. We have the 17th um, uh, uh, the 17th strongest strength of schedule, so one of the easier schedules left in the NBA with only 16 games left. We have key matchups um, in over, over this next part of the game. We have still one game left against Milwaukee, two games left against Philly, one against Philly, one against the Kings, one against the Heat, one against the Clippers. Those are all tough matchups for the Chicago Bulls. And as we know this season, they have played better against the tougher competition, but not necessarily the best against the teams that should be the easier teams left on their schedule. So, you know, here's what I'll say is that when the Bulls play like this, it's always going to bring a level of optimism back. It's always going to bring that, hey, why aren't we playing like this? If we play like this for the remainder of the season, the Bulls can do X, Y, Z, and this and that. I still maintain that I, I still feel like it's a slim chance that the Bulls make the playing tournament. And that's not by percentage. By the percentages, they have a pretty nice margin there where they can still make the play in. But as we know with this team, they can be so up and down. And I, for one, would have to see a performance like this for a longer sustained amount of time before I'm willing to say that now we basically have one month left on the season. That's basically what it is. It's, it's March 9th now. Our last game is April 9th. So no, exactly. We got one month left in this NBA season. What can the Bulls do in that last month? What can they do in those last 30 days? Um, it's really hard to predict because not only do you have players that don't always play with the best heart, they don't always execute, we still have the, the deficits that we've always had. The lack of three-point shooting in a league that values three-point shooting probably the most in NBA history. The math is still going to math at times and it's going to affect the Chicago Bulls, especially if they don't play consistently on defensive end, if they don't play highly efficient offense, it's always going to be a struggle for the Bulls in some of those areas. But we know that what this team can be. And when we're talking about optimism, when we're talking about the team having the chance to make a playing tournament. The way I look at it is this. Yes, this team has the chance. This team has always had the chance. This team has always shown us a bit of flashes of what this team can be like when they play the way that they should be playing. But when you still have a head coach in Billy Donovan, it's still at sometimes the adjustments aren't what we need. Sometimes the trust in players aren't what we need. The development hasn't been what we need. My optimism for the Bulls still making the playing tournament is still low right now. Now, I can understand people who have it higher for them. Can't take away from that. I wish I could be there with you guys on that one, right? I definitely wish that I could. But this team has been so up and down this season that I would, over the last 16 games, honestly, the Bulls need to win between 12 and 14 of those games. And I just don't know if the Bulls have shown the level of heart determination and grit that's going to be necessary to grind out that type of win-loss record in this stretch of games. I would love to be proven wrong. I hope that come April 9th, we're talking and preparing for a Bulls getting some type of postseason play 
in that in that playing tournament. I would love nothing more than to see the Chicago Bulls do that. I would love to see that. Tony, shout out to Tony, who's always in the chat and in the live streams, even said that he could see the Bulls going 14 and 3 in their last 17 games. This was the first one. They have 16 uh, left now. Can the Bulls go 14 and 2 over these last 16 games? They would have to do something similar to that or very close to that for my faith and optimism to be completely restored in the team for this season. But it all comes back down to the thing that I've been saying now on this channel for the longest. No matter what happens with the postseason for the Chicago Bulls, it does not change the work that AK and Eversley need to do to overhaul this roster starting next season. And if we're looking at this team and who's going to still be on this roster by the start of next season, I really don't know, right? I really don't know. You see things like this and you see DeMar be more like he was on the Spurs team. And when he plays like that, he can fit on any roster regardless of the construction and he can help you win games. That's not to say that he hasn't. He still helped us win games this season. But the, but the lack of modern offense, to, for us to change that is going to take some major overhaul. And while some of these players are slowing flashes, while I do love the, the, the progression Kobe White has made this offseason, I just, I, I mean, this season, I, I don't know, man. I, it really comes to it. I really just don't know with this team. And it makes it so hard to predict. You guys know I'm over predicting wins and losses for the Chicago Bulls during this season. And I just want to see a team that just, for the remaining part of the season, whatever the conclusion ends up being, I need to see this team play with heart. And if you see it play with heart, it can at least end in that way. And us having a, a slightly better taste in our mouth, I guess, before we end the season. But the, the work, series work needs to be done this offseason for the Chicago Bulls. And we'll see if Acme is up to the test of making that work happen. But that's it for today's episode of Chicago Bulls Central. Make sure you're following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullsCentralPod at gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. No, that's the, that's the, that's the Chicago Bears uh, phone number. Uh, if you want to leave a, a text message and our voicemail for the Chicago Bulls, it's 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. 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 Media.